Peter, it's up front season again. Do you believe it? It is. What, uh, first question. So what, what are your customers talking to you about this year? What's, what feels different, obviously coming out of the pandemic, but how has it changed? What, what are customers thinking and saying to you right now? Well, what we're seeing out there is there's a kind of a colliding of a few different trends that are, I think, developing into a different kind of marketplace, right? So clearly there's a shift in viewership consumption. Everyone's focused on that, streaming and everything else going on. There's also an interesting development with the, you know, the aging of America, the wealth distribution in America that's bringing, we think, more value to the 50 plus audience, which is the audience most remaining in linear TV. And then you also have the rise of the direct-to-consumer economy that sees television and premium video differently than legacy clients in our eyes. So those three things are creating very different dialogue depending on who you're talking to. And kind of trying to put it together is an interesting um, project. Right. And what, and what are they asking for from you that might be different than years prior? So... And this speaks a bit to, to you know, Amobi and where you're at. I think there is a frustration with, on one level, you can see, here's where the viewers are going. And there's a decent way of measuring that idea of seeing what the, the but bringing it back to a media plan and bringing it back to a single source measurement, and everything else is very frustrating to people. So I think we're looking for companies like Amobi, like yourself, to help kind of unite the industry for lack of a better word, because I think right. you're seeing this fractured nature that's difficult to ladder it back up to a practical plan. Right, right. Is that part of your TV everywhere strategy? Correct, correct. That's what we call it. Right. And what are the insights you see kind of with an audience who, who you're watching them, obviously you can watch them travel ac across channels. What are you able to say to your customers about that multi-screen experience that might be get them to lean in even further and realize that it is additive to unify kind of the two sides or the multiple sides? Good question. I think it depends a bit on where the client is at on the spectrum, right? So for some, this is just trying to maintain or build back reach, right? So you have top lines, you know, median age of linear is 55 plus, right? 55 to 58. On our O and O digital apps, it's in the mid forties. On our CTV stuff, it's mid thirties. So you can clearly see that's speaking a little bit more internally, but it's a little bit across the market as well in terms of directional. If you're just looking to find the audience, you have to go to different places just to ladder it back up to a, whether it's 18 to 49, 2054, or even this broader 18 plus thing. The, the other piece of the conversation is that people are really focused on, I know my target. I know the audience I want to reach. Right. In some ways, this transformation is, make, is enabling that even more because we can hyper-target more on the digital and CTV platforms. So and that brings back, I think, a very interesting thing back to your first question, which is clients are all over that spectrum uh, from mass tonnage reach all the way down to hyper-targeting. And we need to find a solution really for everyone along that path. Right, right, right. Yep, you are, you are a mass player. You want to be talking to everybody, and that's true. They, Peter, I don't know if you've heard this one, but they say data is the new oil. Yeah. And uh, I'm assuming that's a key part of data and technology in order to make this pivot and get everybody into a more powerful place and utilize TV for all of its great brand building aspects, but, but then also be maybe more precise and powerful at the same time. I don't know if there's even a question in that. I'm trying to make I, a good pun of like, you know, data is is used as oil back in the 50s with gas guzzlers, but I can't make a good point. There it is, I believe there's a bit of an overload of data right now and maybe an underload of technology to solve the problem. So what we're seeing a lot of now is there's a lot of solutions being presented, but what's the problem they're trying to solve? So I think what we're trying to get into more and more with client dialogue and agencies, what's the fundamental problem? Mm. Because at its essence, advertising and, and this kind of messaging is about trying to build a business, reach a customer, sell a product. And I think sometimes we as an industry miss that. We get focused on acronyms and new things and all, and we actually miss the very purpose of what we're all doing for a living. So we're trying to use the changes that are happening to go back more to that basic question of, and I think ROI is an overused worst year, but I think it's a good one, right? How do we actually prove 
a greater return on that investment. I, I do believe fundamentally that's the most important thing we collectively, and I think companies like yours and mine are trying to solve that problem. Uh, you know, I'm actually going, going to, I'm going to compliment you here for a minute. Uh, Cause I think actually, you know, under your leadership of your company has been among the first to really make it about the metrics that matter, that make it about KPIs and bringing new outcomes based currency. I mean, guarantees, partial guarantees. I, I, tell us a little bit about that experience for AETN, how you got there, how are you able to kind of lead the industry? What, what did you learn from that? And where, you know, where else might you take that? It was interesting because I believe it was three up friends ago was the first year we said, look, we're, we were willing to not only test, but actually guarantee on some form of an outcome. And it was pretty rudimentary in year one that's gotten a little more sophisticated, but it started with the essence of, we've always known television advertising works, right? I mean, we've been on both sides of the desk. We've, we've talked to clients for years. We go on TV, people come in the restaurants, they come in the stores, they come, you know, we all know it all works. So I think we felt comfortable that if we move the industry or help to move the industry down the path of getting away from some of the, the noise and more to the root problem, ultimately it would succeed. And I'll go back to my previous comments. That's the part that is so encouraging and so interesting talking to the DSC clients because there's, there's no other conversation. It's right. just, does it work? Right. And they're willing to share more information. We share back and forth. And all of a sudden, I think it's reinforcing that position of whether we guarantee on outcomes or just discuss them more. I think it moves all of us in the industry to a better place to focus on the real problem. Does that make sense to you? Yeah, that right. Uh, um, I'm wondering how you build a brand and sell a product at the same time, because we always, you know, we were always like, well, you got to build the brand before you can sell it. These, Correct. these Correct. direct response companies, which sounded sort of lowbrow back then, now are called, you know, more the, the same playbook is for DTC companies who are disruptive and everyone's envious and learning from them. So how do you guys think about that? How are you and your customers working and kind of building a brand and selling products? guaranteeing those outcomes all, is that all just the same thing now? Is the funnel just completely collapsed? I don't think the funnel's collapsed. I think the funnel is got in a little mishmashed or whatever the word is. There is a, I think the lower, mid and upper all frankly coincide, especially in the world we're in. There's more consumers are able to understand a brand and its essence faster than ever. Well, that's interesting. You know, I don't think it has to happen in the old traditional start here, go here, go here. You could argue in the DTC, it actually starts here and works its way up. Yes, for sure. Building. And I think what we're trying to get is legacy clients to understand that more and DTC clients to understand the old. Somewhere in the middle is probably the optimal um, mix. Right, right. Interesting. All right. Let me switch gears here a little bit. Sure. So a lot of the big media companies are becoming data powerhouses themselves. Yes. You know, we, we know the big three who have been sort of winning in that game. And now a lot of the other companies are doing that, um, whether they become wall gardens or gated gardens, you know, give, give, me the, give me the state of the garden industry and what's, you know, where is it and where are we going to be in three years with regards to everyone building or not fortresses around there, around what they've got and how, where, where do you think that's going and where do, how do advertisers, you know, navigate that? I think there's two pieces to the, I like the garden reference. It's good in the walls because there's data walls and there's content walls too. Mm -hmm. So what we're starting to see as a, as a somewhat independent neutral company, we don't have our own self-proclaimed a &E plus service or something. We actually partner with almost everybody in the space, you know, from Peacock to, to Roku to almost everybody across the board in some way, shape or form. What we're learning is the bigger companies uh, and I'm thinking more of the bigger traditional TV publishers, studios, et cetera, are bringing more content in-house and then trying to use that as their way to win, right? With that, they have more first-party data, et cetera. You, of course, have your Google, Facebook, and everybody else that has more data than anyone could ever imagine, right? So a place like us, what we're realizing is you can win in that landscape even if you're not the biggest garden player or the biggest gardener. You can actually play off all of the trends and all the learnings you're getting from all these partners. So one of the advantages I think we see, and I think it'd be interesting to see your company and your colleagues see is you're kind of partnering with a lot of people too. You get a little yeah. insight from everyone. 
Yeah. Uh, no one has the optimal thing. No one has the solution. So what we're learning is we learn a little bit here from Roku and a little bit here from Amazon. Look, and you put together, I think, a thought of where it's all going. So the question of where it's going to be in three years, I do think there's going to be winners and losers. I don't think there's any question about it. And it was I saw a report on this the other day. Not every streaming product is going to win. Uh, there's going to have to be pivots and more things coming around it. So I think we'll learn a lot more. And it's got, a lot of it's going to be in the hands of can you create and amass the right content to reach the right viewer? That's the heart of the data, isn't it? Is the actual viewer mm -hmm. coming to see an experience? Yeah, that's true. It's just, yep, I think you're going to need technology to figure this out. I just 100%. don't, it's too complex. All right, let me ask you one final question. Good point, though. It's too manual still, ironically, right? It's too, it's not technology abled, and we all need that. And again, I go back to, I think Amobi is one of the companies in the business trying to help enable all that and make it simpler. Right. I think you do need a platform uh, right. in order to figure this out. Let me ask you one. Let me ask you one final question. So sure. the famous Mark Pritchard quote, beginning of the year, some form of all advertising will be programmatic. Let me let me some form of programmatic is the future of all advertising. That's how he said it. How do you guys think about, about you know, how do you think about that? Is it going all is it all going programmatic? No, I don't think it's all going programmatic. I think, look, there is. There is computer and AI driven decision making that's going to help make better decisions as we go. The human element will always be a part of it. I believe the upfront as we know it will exist well past our lifetimes in this business in some way, shape or form, because it still serves a purpose. But the more we can, we can borrow lessons from programmatic and programmatic and borrow lessons from traditional. And again, I go back to, I believe there's a benefit in the middle. Um, of those two worlds. So, and let's face it, programmatic has a word. Everyone can have their own definition of programmatic anyway. So if you go to that respect, I do think there'll be more automation and more data-driven decision-making. That is fair. Great. Why don't we leave it there? I'm going to wish you a, a very successful upfront. Thank you, and Tim. Great to spend a little time together and we'll catch up soon. I look forward to the Celtics and the Knicks racing down the end of the season. And I, we have a $1 wager on, and it's the first time ever the Knicks have been close to winning yes. the wager. Yes, very true. We, we do $1, big bet. $1, big bet. Thank you, Tim. See you later, Peter.